My father told me something when I announced my engagement, and I will never forget it. Zoe, are you sure about marrying this man, Peter? He asked me as he pulled me aside. Although I am aware of your love for him, I don't believe he is a good fit for you. Daddy, why are you saying this? He respects and loves me. It doesn't matter whether he has less money than we do. Zoe, I am aware of it. I didn't start with anything, as you know. Although I would never treat someone from a lower socioeconomic status disrespectfully, Peter is a very dubious man, and his mother is no better. Dad, what do you mean? I'm not sure I get it. Call it a father's instinct, Zoe. This man doesn't love you. Yes, he showers you with affection, but he always talks about how rich you are. I heard him flexing to his friends that he bagged the rich brat. Julia just laughed with him and agreed. You must be mistaken, Dad. Peter would never say those things about me. Julia also loves me a lot. I'm sure she would scold Peter if he tried to joke like that. Sometimes I wish I had listened to my father. He knew what he was talking about. I was a stupid girl in love. My mother passed away two years before I got married. My dad was sick and wasn't long for this world. I was desperate to hold on to something that would give me the will to live. Peter and Julia became those people. My dad was a rich man. He made a series of good investments that made him very financially well off. I worked hard at my job and earned a moderate salary as well. All in all, we were pretty comfortable in life. My husband Peter and his mom Julia weren't that well off. Yes, Peter did earn more than me, but he came from a very humble background. His field wasn't good enough to make him a millionaire. Peter did hold some resentment toward it. He and Julia liked sophisticated and expensive things. He often complained about not having enough money. I was always glad to help them out with the little allowance my dad gave me. I even let Peter and Julia move into my house after marriage, but neither Peter nor Julia were happy with my house. They said, it's such a shame that you live in a small house. Your dad literally lives in a mansion. How come you bought such a small town house? I don't earn a lot, Peter. Dad lives in a mansion because he has lots of money. I'm a simple office employee earning a moderate salary. This house was difficult for me to buy as well. Dad helped me out with the down payment. Well, if he helped you out, he should have got you a better place. I'm sure your mom left him something to give you when you became older. I'm not entitled to anything, Julia. Whatever my mom left behind is my dad's now. She died suddenly, so there was no will. I don't mind if I don't get anything. I'm happy with the way things are. That's a ridiculous thing to say, Zoe. I sure would have loved to inherit a lot of money. You know what? Your dad should trade houses with us. He lives alone, so he doesn't need the space anyway, right, Mom? Yeah, Peter's right, Zoe, you can ask. Absolutely not. That house is my dad's, and he deserves to live comfortably as long as he is alive. Well, he won't be alive for long now that he's sick. We can wait and compromise for a few years and see what happens. Ultimately, everything will be yours after your dad dies. You'll have plenty of money to buy a big house and more. The way Julia and Peter were already making plans to spend my inheritance was super disturbing. It also didn't help that they regularly asked me to ask my dad for more money. It's not like we were hurting for cash. Peter and Julia simply wanted the millionaire life, even if they weren't millionaires. Honestly, I was getting tired of their behavior. However, the real drama happened after my father passed away. My dad's cancer took him away from me pretty soon. I was devastated but got little support from Peter or Julia. They were only concerned about the date of the will reading and didn't even help with the funeral. Hell, they refused to attend the funeral because my dad was no one to them. I was heartbroken and furious. At that point, my dad's words kept coming back to me. I was getting suspicious of them and started to have doubts about their intentions. I was afraid that they were really after my inheritance money. They were not allowed to be in the reading of the will. Peter and Julia said, Why the hell are we not allowed to read the will? This is ridiculous. Lawrence was my own father-in-law.
Yes, this is ridiculous. We are family and should be present for this event. We have the right to know what Lawrence left in the will. At least my son should be allowed to be there. Your son is not in the will, Julia, so he cannot read the will. Why are you two so obsessed with inheritance? You didn't even come to the funeral. It was funny how my dad was suddenly family when it came to getting an inheritance. I was pretty annoyed at Julia and Peter. What was worse was that they started to hound me as soon as I got back from reading the will. They were not allowed to see the will. I had a hard time dealing with the grief of losing my father, but I got no words of support or sympathy from them. They simply wanted to know about my inheritance. Julia asked me, so we've been wondering about something for a while now. How much inheritance did you receive from your parents? You must have got a lot of money. How much money did you get? My parents unfortunately didn't leave me any money in my inheritance, so I received zero. What? You didn't get any money. But your parents were rich. They should have left you something. I don't believe that you didn't get any money. I'm sure you're lying to us, Zoe. There is no way your parents didn't leave you a single penny. No, Peter, there was no money in my inheritance. The will didn't even mention me getting any kind of money. You can check my bank balance in a few days and find out. But what about their riches? Who will get those? You are their only child. I don't know about that, Julia. The lawyer just told me that I didn't get any money. It's fine by me. It was my parents' money, and it's up to them who they would give it to. That is ridiculous. You need to fight for the money. It should be yours. There is no money, Peter. They didn't have much money in the end. Whatever was left was given to charity. They have been planning this for a while now. Julia and Peter looked very pissed by what I said. I had no idea why they were being this weird about my inheritance. I almost told them the full details, but something stopped me from doing it. There was this creeping doubt in my mind that my husband and mother-in-law were up to something. I waited for them to digest the news. When Julia and Peter kept pressuring me for more information, I put my foot down. I told them firmly that I didn't get any money and even offered to show them my account in a few days. Well, a month passed, and nothing showed up. In the meantime, Peter grew very restless and stopped being affectionate with me. He was always checking. My account and constantly hounding me for information on my inheritance, I was starting to see where this was going. Finally, one day I decided to put an end to it. I showed them my bank statements and said, See, I told you that I didn't receive anything. I'm not hiding any secret inheritance money from you. Do you believe me now? Wow, our years of hard work just went down the drain then. So his parents weren't rich and she didn't even get $1,100 in the will. This is ridiculous. I can't believe this. I can't believe this either, Mom. I stayed in this marriage for nothing. I married Zoe for nothing. It was all a waste of time. What the hell does that mean, Peter? Why are you talking like this? Why do you think he's saying these things? So who the hell would marry you without thinking about the money? My son simply married you so that we could bank on your inheritance. Now I see that you didn't even get a penny. I can't believe I wasted five freaking years on a useless girl like her. I could have done so much better. I was stunned to hear them speak that way about me. I could finally tell that Peter married me for money. My parents were right about him and his mom. They were freaking gold diggers. I was so freaking done with my husband and mother-in-law. I was breaking inside, but what they said next turned me to stone. Julia looked at Peter solemnly and said, What is done is done, Peter, but now it's time for you to divorce Zoe. There's no reason why you should stay with her anymore. You'll have time to find a new rich wife. This time, we'll make sure she actually has some money to her name. Are you freaking kidding me, Julia? You're asking Peter to divorce me over money. Peter, are you going to listen to her? Of course I would listen to her, Zoe. I married you so that I and my mom could have a comfortable life. We grew up poor and I didn't even go to college. I had no way of earning a lot of money. So you pretended to love me and then tricked me into marrying you. You thought that my parents would give me lots of money that I would readily share with you. 
Yes, that's what I thought. It was the only way I could give my mom the life she wanted. But now I see that my efforts were in vain. Mom's right. I need to divorce you and keep looking. I was stunned by what Peter said. He said those things so nonchalantly that I started to question my own sanity. Julia and Peter went on to express their frustration with my marriage and myself. I didn't hear a word after a while. I was too busy coming to terms with what they had just thrown at me. Their total lack of reaction and Peter's sudden shift in behavior were both depressing and injuring to me. After a point, I was so mad that I wanted to scream and throw things. However, I didn't do any of that. I calmly said, okay then, Peter. If a divorce is what you want, you will get it. I was never one to say no to your demands. I might as well give in to your demand now as a last favor. So you will agree to a mutual divorce. It'll save us both a lot of money. By the looks of it, you don't have much to go on anyway. Don't think of this as an opportunity to get alimony from my son. We will fight you tooth and nail before you give up that dream. You better preserve your lawyer fees and agree to a mutual divorce. It'll be best for you. You're right. I don't have a lot of money right now, so I decided something. I will agree to a mutual divorce, but you have to sign a clause saying that we won't share any of our assets with each other. That's not a problem at all. You don't have much and neither do I at the moment. If you can forego alimony, I'll agree to sign a divorce and won't claim anything from you. Peter and I discussed the details of the divorce and made sure we were on the same page. I could see that Julia and Peter were both happy about me not making a fuss over the divorce. I guess they didn't expect me to be so calm about it. Truth be told, ever since that day, I have been crying on my way to and from work. I used to sit in the parking lot of my office and cry for an hour before and after work. Peter never noticed my puffy eyes or even asked why I was leaving early for work and coming home late. Julia didn't even bother looking at me after she discovered that I had no money. All of their behavior just made me even more determined to get out of the marriage as soon as possible. I actually had Peter and Julia move out of my house to a rented space in the neighborhood. They soon settled in, and while we waited for the divorce to finalize, true to his word, Peter didn't demand a share of my house. I also didn't ask for alimony. In his eyes, it was a fair deal. Well, he had no idea just how far I had made things out to be. He came to know about it on the day our divorce was finalized. I went over to his new rented space to drop off my wedding and engagement rings. Zoe, I just wanted to return these to you. Since the marriage only brought bad times into my life, I don't want to have any memory of it. Are you sure? Do you want to return it? I mean, you might need the money after all. It's so funny you don't, Zoe. You must have laughed at our poverty before. Look where you are now. My son is being generous and giving you the rings. You might need to sell them when your stupid job doesn't pay enough. We don't want the rings. They're cheap ones anyway. What would I need to sell the rings for money, Julia? You don't have to be embarrassed, Zoe. We already know how your parents didn't leave anything. I guess they lost everything due to poor financial decisions, leaving their daughter destitute. At that point, I laughed very loudly in her face. Julia looked confused and so did Peter. I could tell that Peter was somewhat annoyed by his mother's behavior and he was also surprised at my laughter. Julia said, why the hell are you laughing, Zoe? Did I say something funny? It's freaking funny how you think I'm destitute, Julia. It's also funny that you think my parents lost all their fortune. Well, of course, you're destitute. Your parents didn't even leave you a penny. They surely messed up and ruined your life by not leaving you an inheritance. I never said that I didn't get an inheritance, Julia. I simply told you that I didn't get any money. My parents did, in fact, leave me plenty of inheritance. What the hell does that mean? You have an inheritance? I'm so confused. My parents could see you and Julia for the little gold diggers you two are, so they made a secret clause in their will. It said that I would receive no monetary inheritance. Instead, I was given this entire neighborhood as my inheritance. What? You own this neighborhood now? How is that possible? 
We would have known about your inheritance if this were true. We even signed the lease with an estate manager who didn't tell us the name of the owner. My parents wanted me to wait for a year before I got my inheritance. They wanted me to test you too and see if you were really with me for money or love. Well, of course, you failed the test and now you won't get anything from me. Also, the estate manager was appointed by my parents to take care of the property before I inherited it. They were smart people, you know. That is impossible. I don't believe a word you're saying. You're just embarrassed because you don't have money anymore. Oh, really, Peter? Is that what you and your mother have concluded from this? Well, why don't you call your landlord and find out from him? Don't worry, we will do that. Then everyone will see just what a big liar you are. Julia and Peter called their landlord and asked about what I said. Since their landlord was the estate manager, he told them everything. Julia and Peter were stunned. They looked really panicked after cutting the call. You, you lied to us. You tricked us into thinking that you don't have anything, but you own the entire housing society now. How dare you trick us? Zo, you wanted all your riches to yourself, so you tricked Peter into divorcing you and made him sign papers that he wouldn't claim anything from you. I laughed at their audacity to turn this one on me. It was finally dawning on them that they had messed up royally, and now it was time for some sweet karma. I said, it's funny you accused me of you too. Peter, you tricked me into marrying you by telling me that you love me. Julia, you helped your son in this plan, and you were the one to tell him to divorce me. If anyone here was being a scammer, it was you too. As for my inheritance, you asked me how much money I got, and I answered truthfully. This was all a misunderstanding. Zo, what happened is in the past. Why don't we just try again in the new light? We did spend four years together. It would be a shame to throw it away. So now you want me back in your life? Funny how you were desperate to start afresh with a new girl. I hear that you are already seeing someone rich. Don't worry, I'll inform her about what a snake you are. Peter and Julia started to beg me not to mess up this new relationship. Peter told me that since I wasn't ready to give him another chance, I shouldn't mess up his future. I told him to freak off. Also, I informed them that I will kick them out once the property is transferred to my name. They panicked at that and started to beg me even more. In the weeks that followed, Julia and Peter showed up at my house to beg me to forgive them. Peter and Julia already have an eviction on their record, so it is unlikely anyone would give them rent. The only reason they were staying on my property was that I asked the estate manager to allow it. I also called Peter's new victim and told her everything. She was horrified by what Peter and Julia did and broke up with him instantly. She even displayed the texts for me. Following this disaster, Peter and Julia called me derogatory remarks and kicked down my door. I immediately phoned the police and ordered their removal from my property. They quickly left once I received my fortune in my name. Although they didn't think I would follow through on the threat, they did return to my property and the police were called. I requested a restraining order and the police issued them a severe warning. As it happens, Everyone in the community was aware of what had occurred. They were practically abandoned by their friends and were forced to relocate to a new location. I'm enjoying my newfound fortune in the interim and am glad to be rid of the gold-digging leeches.